Chapter 1. Put the odds in your favour. How many guys do you meet in an average week? And when I say meet, I refer to a genuine social interaction where you engage with a man, eye contact and all, for anywhere from five minutes of chatting to a full two-hour conversation. But it has to be a conversation, not just collecting your mail from the postman, unless, of course, he's new and you turn him into a new social connection. If your answer is none, or even one, how long do you think it's going to take you to meet the guy? I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. Let's say you meet one new man every week. How long will it take you to meet Mr. Wright if you're only meeting one new man in an average week? Now, I'm not a mathematician, but the odds are pretty long. What makes them even longer is that these interactions are probably happening by chance, and certainly not because they are the men you have selected yourself. This isn't the case for only you, of course. If I asked the same question of a male reader, the number would be just as small. Both sexes are guilty of leaving their love lives to chance. I know because I did it myself. Blame it on the fairy tales we read as kids. Blame it on Hollywood. But the fact remains that we've come to believe that true love is the product of fate. We've all been led to believe that someday it will just happen. That one day, fate will drop the person of our dreams right next to us while we're standing at a stoplight. The fate will bring me love approach lacks urgency, which leads to lack of action. You assume that when the time is right, the right guy will come along. And in the meantime, you focus on your work, your ambitions, your family, your friends, your hobbies. That's not to say that these aren't all highly fulfilling aspects of your life in their own right, but I want to help you understand how within these essential parts of your life are opportunities to find the man of your dreams. When people put aside their love life to focus on these other areas, years pass, and one day the lack of urgency turns into panic. We become frantic as we realize that not only is nothing happening in our love life, but we're at a loss as to how to make it happen. Which, of course, leads to more panic, creating a loop of frustration at best, or worse, hopelessness. You may be listening to this book because you keep asking yourself, and everyone around you, where are all the good men to be found? If you're gradually coming to the realization that fate isn't cooperating, you might be on the verge of seeing that you're going to have to be proactive. You are going to have to go out and find him. And how do you find him? I'm going to let you in on a little secret right now. It's a very simple principle. You ready? To meet more men, you have to um, meet more men. Waiting or creating? A word of encouragement before you set out to meet the man of your dreams. Life is full of people who wait. They wait for the right moment to approach someone. They wait for someone to approach them first. They wait for someone to show enough interest that they don't have any risk of being rejected. They wait to be invited. They wait to make a move. They wait to feel confident before taking action. Wait, wait, wait for everything. Waiters imagine that they are playing it safe. But more often than not, only two things come to those who wait. The wrong thing, or worse, nothing. Ask yourself, right now, at this very moment, Am I waiting or am I creating? Am I taking positive steps which will give me results in my love life? If your answer is no, take heart. Simply by listening to this book, you are already taking action, seeking the knowledge that will enable you to make the necessary changes for rapid progress. There's an added benefit to taking your life into your own hands, by the way. When you know you're doing everything in your power to improve your situation, you can be content even if the results aren't immediate. The knowledge that you're moving forward, improving, and developing in a significant